Well, welcome to a brand new season of A Word for Today. My name is Brent Shias. In this first episode of season four, entitled The Voices We Hear, Pastor Stefan Chauvet will share with Marcy Selman some of the fascinating spiritual revelations he has received from the Lord over the years. Once again, I am convinced that you will be blessed by Pastor Chauvet's exceptional understanding of God's Word. You know, the world around us can be quite loud, teeming with diverse opinions, all emerging from extremely different sources. Yet, as believers, the only voice we should listen to should emanate from God's Word. And Pastor Stefan will address that in today's episode. So, set aside any distractions and prepare to take notes as Marcy Selman and Pastor Chauvet tackle today's subject, The Voices We Hear, in this inspiring episode of A Word for Today. Good evening, my name is Marcy Selman. It is my honor to be here with you today. For those of you who are new to a word for today, Pastor Chauvet is an anointed minister of the Lord who is blessed with a wonderful ability to share the richness of God's word in a brilliant way. In addition to being a gifted pastor and teacher, he is also a graphic designer, a worship leader, musician, historian, and prolific author of several popular books. Now it is my joy to introduce my pastor and my dear friend, Pastor Stefan Chauvet. Good evening, Pastor Stefan. Good evening, Marcy. It's always wonderful to sit and talk about our Lord and discover how wonderful he is, isn't well, it? Well, the pleasure is all mine to be with you today. Amen. So first off, um, we know that in this world of increased communications, there are many voices that are around us. So that can actually influence us too. So out of those voices, how many would you say are there in general? Well, I'm very glad you asked this question because that's a topic that is so important mm -hmm. as far as our believers are concerned. Right. We must differentiate between the voices we hear. Right. Jesus tells us in John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful verse. Yes. But Paul also tells us in Corinthians that there are many voices in this world and each of them has a power to influence our society. Okay. Go figure. So we must be able, as the Apostle Paul, to know to discern which voices do speak to us on a daily basis. Okay. Of course, the most beautiful voice we can hear is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the voice of the Holy Spirit is the voice of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I know what some people have difficulty to understand this, mm -hmm. but the Scripture tells us no less than seven times that the Holy Spirit is Jesus and mm -hmm. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Paul calls him the Spirit of Christ. That's right. So if the Holy Spirit speaks to us, it's because Jesus is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Lord told us, it is expedient for me to go and leave this earth so that I can send you my Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Because once Jesus walked on this earth, he was at one place at a time. Right. But once he departed from this earth, he could send his Holy Spirit. And lo and behold, we have the Spirit of Christ abiding in every believer around the world instantaneously. Amen. What a beautiful benefit that we have from the Lord. Yes. So the voice of the Holy Spirit is the voice par excellence. Right. But unfortunately, it's also the least imposing voice. Okay. It's a gentle voice. Mm -hmm. It's a kind voice. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will never impose himself. Okay. Now, let's go back to the other voices that we do hear. There are actually five voices that we can hear. Okay. Now, this is not my personal opinion. This is scripturally founded doctrine. Right. First of all, 
you will have the voice of self. Mm -hmm. There are 18 verses in the scriptures. For example, uh, Peter said to himself, the prodigal son said to himself, the Lord said to himself in the book of Genesis. So we can see that we have the ability to speak to Mm ourselves. I can be in the car driving and say to myself, oh, I must not forget it's my wife's birthday. Right. You speak to yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's a voice that we hear, the first one. Actually, that's the voice you'll hear the most of the time, the voice of yourself. Mm. From the early years, as you grow up, you have a personal conversation. Mm -hmm. You dialect with yourself. In fact, your brain never stops thinking. Even in your dreams, you have conversation. That is true. So that's the voice you hear the most, the voice of self. Secondly, you'll have the voice of the world. The voice of the world can be compared when we speak about teenagers, peer pressure. Right. The voice of the world is trying to impose its will on you, trying to tell you this is how you should think. Okay. This is how you should behave. Mm. For example, in the 50s, the whole world thought that this is right and this is wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, the world has changed in the 60s, and now this is wrong and this is right. right. And I dare you not think the same way as we do. Exactly. That's the voice of the world. It tells you who you should vote for. Mm-hmm. It tells you what you should believe. Mm-hmm. It tells you how you should behave sexually, morally, in many ways. Right. The voice of the world is a tyrannical voice. Mm. If you don't do as I say, we're going to ostracize you. Mm. We're going to cancel you. A lot of pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me... Start again. You have the voice of self, Mm -hmm. the voice of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, the third voice is the voice of your flesh. Okay. Your flesh has a voice. It certainly does. It has some appetites, cravings. Mm -hmm. It's not all, you know, appetites as far as food is concerned. You have sexual cravings. Mm -hmm. And the list goes on. But the voice of the flesh is also a very primitive temptation. Mm. It's the easiest thing you must conquer as a believer. If you can't conquer the voice of your flesh as a believer, what are you going to do when you're going to face the devil himself? Mm, That's a good point. Yes. Yes. So the voice of the flesh, although very primitive, are the basic instincts of your natural body, the voice of your body, the Mm -hmm. voice, the appetites of your flesh. Mm -hmm. Then there's another voice, the voice of the enemy himself, with his demons, of course. We saw in Genesis chapter 3, Satan spoke to Adam and Eve. Right. We see in Luke 4 and Matthew 4, Satan spoke to Jesus. Mm-hmm. We see Satan speaking directly to tempt people. At other times in the book of Acts, it's demons speaking on behalf of the devil. Mm. So it is a voice, although rarely encounter as regular folks. Uh, the devil is a person. He will get involved when it's necessary. Right. Otherwise, he will send his... His minions, he'll send his little one demons to do the job. Mm -hmm. Regardless, it's still a voice. And of course, lastly, it's the voice of the Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. the voice of a king, Mm -hmm. the voice of our master. Mm -hmm. When he speaks to us, here's why most people disobey the Lord. It's because all the other voices you heard, they're mostly imposing voices, but not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never imposes himself. That's why a lot of people disobey the voice of the Holy Spirit, because it's the gentlest voice. Mm. You would think it'd be the other way around. You You think. think. But God displays by doing this the fact that he is a God that has given us a free will. Mm. See, if the Lord speaks to you or speaks to me, and then I am like a robot obligated to obey his word, then I am not really free. I am doing what I was uh, created to do. Like a robot. Right. But no, God gave us a free will. Mm. And if he gives us a free will, therefore, he must give us the option of obeying or disobeying. Mm. That's why he did say in Deuteronomy, I present to you before you life or death, but choose life. So on a day-to-day basis, we hear all these voices, the voice of self, the voice of the world, the voice of our flesh, Mm -hmm. the voice of the enemy, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. On a day-to-day basis, we must reject the voice of the enemy, the voice of the flesh, the voice of the world, and we must accept the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so certainly in that case, obviously we want to be sensitive to him. How then, what should we do to help us keep our eyes and our ears open to perceive when the Lord is speaking to us? Well, I'll give you a little trick. Okay. 
If you have a neighbor that every time you talk to him is offensive, is impolite, is rude to you, mm -hmm. do you desire to have another conversation with him? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. So that's why the scripture tells us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Yes. The more you block him, the more you offend him, the least he'll show up. Mm. So the best way is to have a humble heart, a teachable spirit, yeah. so that every time the spirit speaks to you, you will listen, he'll come back and speak to you more. Oh, that's beautiful. And you'll develop that reflex that every time he speaks to you, you go, yes. And you'll be able to answer him and say, yes, I will obey. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so certainly, obviously having that, that opportunity, that gift from the Lord to be able to communicate with him. What are the pitfalls then to claiming, yes, we can hear the voice well, of the Well, the Lord. pitfalls comes with the first voice. Okay. The voice of self. Mm -hmm. That's where the pitfall is. Okay. See, let's say, for example, uh, I want to commit a terrible sin, and it's not the case, but many have been ensnared by this. They want to commit a terrible sin, uh, but they don't want to be caught in that sin. So right. they blame God. Mm. God told me to do this. God told me to declare war. God told me to do this. You're blaming God for something that you thought of. Right. That's, That's right. a snare. Okay. To put our voice and say, this is God's mm. voice. Mm. Blame the Almighty for our shortcomings. Right. That is the most difficult snare to combat. How do you know when it's your voice? and not God's voice, or right. vice versa. Mm -hmm. First of all, God will never tell you anything that contradicts His Word, ever. That's true. Ever. That's true. Because the Word is Jesus, and Jesus is the Lord. Mm -hmm. So why would He tell you something that contradicts His nature? Exactly. Jesus told us everything in the Scriptures, what we need to do, what we need to obey. So the Word for us is generically giving answers for things of day-to-day -day affairs. Mm -hmm. I need the Word of God to know that such a behavior is sinful. Right. I need the Word of God to tell me that such a behavior is praiseworthy. Right. I need the Word of God to know what is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I need the Holy Spirit to tell me, should I buy this car? Should I buy this house? Right. Should I get into partnership with this fellow? Holy Spirit, I need you. Because there's no such thing as verses that it's tells true. me, don't buy this house or don't do this or do that. Right. So we need the Word of God to have the foundation of our faith. Mm -hmm. But we need the Holy Spirit that speaks to us to deal with the details of our fate. Mm, we need the Word of God to have a good, proper foundation of what is right and wrong. Right. Once we have that foundation and we hear a voice that tells us, do this, right away, you know that is unscriptural. Mm. It cannot be the voice of God. Right. So you go by plain deduction. Okay. It's either the devil or it's myself. And quite often, sadly, a lot of people are roam the land claiming they were prophets, men or women of God, claiming God is saying, and it was not God. Right. It was their ego, right. their self. Mm -hmm. And they have created havoc everywhere they went. Mm -hmm. So we have to walk wisely. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, John 10, 27, we should remember that verse by heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Right. They hear me and they follow me. Yes, amen. And like you said, it's certainly it's a relationship and we develop that over time with the Holy yes. Spirit. Well, I've said it before. I think I've said it about three times now with you. If I stand in a crowd of 50 people, now Marcy, you, and I said it before, yeah. you know me for 32 years. Mm -hmm. If I stand in a crowd of 50 people and someone says, and all the voices, which one is your pastor? Then you'll hear my voice says, there he is. Mm -hmm. Because you right. know me. Right. So as it is with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I can have a lot of conversations with myself. I can have my body speaking passionate desires. I can have the world creating pressure. Yeah. I can have the devil lying to me. But I'll recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because I've been with him for so long. Granted, that doesn't make us perfect. Right. Paul tells us we know in part. So mm -hmm. we have to walk in humility. You know, if great men who walk with Jesus failed, so could we. That's true. So we have to walk in humility and understand that we know in part. Because mm -hmm. certainly, then like you said, as you've mentioned previously, that sometimes circumstances can create a bit of confusion because then there's always that question in the back of your mind. Oh, as... it's, not, it's not something that can be developed in one day. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like a tree that grows, it takes time. Right. It takes time. You know, when I was a young lad, I remember as if it was yesterday, mm -hmm. I used to be in the backyard at my grandparents' house. I was, let's say, seven years old. 
And I had determined in my little mind, mm -hmm. I want to see the sun move. Right. So here I am sitting down in a camping chair, watching the sun for five to seven minutes. Oh, That's not so good. It. Yes. And I wanted to see it move. I, I never catch it. Okay. But lo and behold, my grandmother brought me a little glass of soft drink. Okay. As I'm, and I saw the sun previously in an angle with the house, so I knew where it was located. Right. As I drank the soft drink, talked to my grandmother, turned around, the sun had moved. Mm. Just like a tree, you cannot see growth. Right. You have to look somewhere else, then you come back, the tree has grown. Oh. The sun has moved. So as it is with our growth in Christ. Right. If I just inspect you every second of the day, I am not going to see any changes. Right. But if I look back eight years, nine years, 15 years, 20 years, I can see the growth. Mm -hmm. So as it is with the Holy Spirit, it's not on the first day that you'll be able to say, I discerned the voice of the Spirit. I got it. Right. It's by trials, mistakes. We learn as we walk on the narrow road towards Christ-likeness. When you think of that, what are the dangers if we repeatedly ignore the voice of the Lord? Well, no, that is as dangerous as the first danger. Mm. The first danger was to confuse our voice with the voice of the Lord, to say, God spoke to me, yeah. I'm gonna marry you. When God didn't speak to you, mm -hmm. you're just lusting after that person. Right. First of all, before we go there, let me explain a small little principle that people must remember. Okay. The nature of God is love. Mm -hmm. The nature of the devil is lust. Mm. God loves. Okay. He gives. The devil lust. he wants. Mm, that's an important distinction. You understand? Yes. So if you want to know the nature of God, you'll see that his Holy Spirit is a giver. He gives you happiness. He gives you joy. He gives you instruction. Mm -hmm. He speaks to you blessings that brings you close to Christ. Mm -hmm. The devil is a liar. Everything he does is a counterfeit of God's nature. Yes. So God is love, so you give. The devil wants lust, so he desires. Mm. You see that in the old covenant, a man lusting after another woman, he desire to be with her. Right. It's a That's demanding, true. it demands. While God is not a demanding, lustful God, mm -hmm. he's a demanding, righteous God, right. but God is also a giver. God so loved the world that he gave. Mm -hmm. So first trap is to confuse our mind our voice with the voice of God mm. and say, this is God speaking when in fact it's not. Right. We've covered that already about 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. The second trap is as dangerous is to rebuke or reject the voice of God when he's speaking to us so often mm. that the Lord abandons you. Okay. Oh my. You know how tragic just this statement is? It's terrifying is. to think about. It's terrifying. Yeah. We're not talking about your neighbor that doesn't want to talk to you anymore. We're not talking about a friend that you used to have for years who doesn't call you back. Right. We're talking about the almighty God, the Holy Spirit, says you have grieved me so much, I don't come back. Now, yeah. granted, in the scriptures, it's a rare event. Mm -hmm. But it does happen. In the book of Judges, chapter 16, Samson offended the Holy Spirit so many times mm. that the scripture tells us in verse 20, and the spirit had departed from him, but he did not know. Oh, my. Yeah. He did not know. Mm. See, when you have the Holy Spirit, you know. Yeah. But if you lose the Holy Spirit, you don't know because you don't have the spiritual awareness that he's gone. Right. You lost that sensitivity. Mm. If I walk on the beach with my wife and there's a little piece of glass that cuts my underfoot, mm -hmm. I'm going to go, ouch. Right. I'm going to turn around and look and I'm bleeding. God has made our skin with millions of nerves to warn us mm -hmm. of injuries that otherwise we wouldn't know. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. I can be walking for two miles not knowing that I'm dripping blood for the last two miles, right? Exactly. So we know, ouch, we have a sensitive skin with nerves that warns us of an injury. Mm. So is the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy yeah. Spirit is there to say, ouch, don't do that. Yeah. Oh, don't do this. But if you lose the ability of responding to the Holy Spirit, like nerves on our skin, right. then you don't know when you're doing something detrimental to your spiritual walk. That's good, yeah. You understand? That's true. Mm -hmm. Samson lost the Holy Spirit. He did not know. Lo and behold, he falls in sin. Right. They cut his hair. He becomes weak. They blinded him. Well, you know what happened? 
The fact is, he became blind in the natural because he's always re- he was already blind in the spirit. Mm, that is what happened in the spirit was manifested in the natural world. He was blind in the spirit. He became blind in the natural world. Right. You cannot grieve the Holy Spirit to the point where he says, I am departing from you. Mm. You can't do that. So that's the second trap, yeah. the dangerous snare mm-hmm. to confuse your voice for God's voice or vice versa. Right. And to extremely be offensive to the Holy Spirit that he departs. Can't take it for granted. No. Yeah. Humility is very important. Mm-hmm. You know, the world is looking for great men to save our society. Right. But the Lord says, no, I'm not looking for great men. Mm. I'm looking for good men. Mm. God is that looking is, for good men. That is an excellent Because point. once they are good, he can make them great. Amen. Amen to that. That's a great point. You understand? Point. Yes. If yes. their hearts are pliable, so they will hear the voice of the Lord and God will grant them the talent, the abilities, the strengths, the know-how, mm-hmm. the knowledge, the wisdom. He's going to pour his gifts on these men, these women, of course, if they have a heart after God. But if they have talents and they have no heart, you have Samson. That's why mm. you must remember, God That's is good. not looking for aptitudes. He's looking for attitude. Mm-hmm. He's looking for a good heart because I can take a good heart and teach that person. But if I have a callous heart, a broken, a, a, a closed heart, mm-hmm. there's nothing you can't do with that. Yeah, I could imagine. But the Lord is so good. Amen. You Amen. got a lot of revelations in the last 15 minutes concerning the word of the Lord. Amen. And how many voices do we hear? Five? But there's only one we should listen. Yes. The voice of the Holy Spirit. He alone can influence, should influence us in our daily walk. Yes. So as you described, certainly there's all of these pitfalls and things we need to look out for. So you described some of the things, but perhaps you can elaborate a bit more about the benefits of Ah. listening to the the voice of the Lord. Yeah, now we spoke about the ending results that can be detrimental to our life, Mm -hmm. confusing our voice of the Lord with our voice and disobeying God's voice to the point where he departs. But there's also benefits. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, classic verse, if thou shalt hearken unto my voice, hear hard the blessings that I will, no, they will pursue you basically. Yes, Yes, a beautiful list. A a list, I mean, a grocery list of all the blessings. Granted, back in the days, we're talking about farmers, we're talking about shepherds, but you can spiritually apply these verses to us today. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, if you will obey my voice, here are the blessings that I will give you. And that list to this day, from Judaism to Christianity, people listen to that voice, read that passage. Uh, Even when I perform marriage ceremony, wedding ceremony, I read that, that passage to the newlywed, because they have to understand Mm -hmm. that once we obey God's voice, God says, okay, now here's the blessing that will follow. Mm -hmm. In a world where there are so many voices that speak, political parties, uh, religious Mm sects, the list goes on. There's so many voices. You must be able, in the midst of that chaotic, you know, mayhem, to say, there's the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the voice I will obey. Right. Again, I'm repeating because it's important that our listeners understand. Yes. It does not happen 24 hours. Mm-hmm. It takes time to develop the ability, the knowledge, the know-how to say, okay, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, people have been serving the Lord for 50 years. I've been there serving the Lord for 33 years. And no one has a copyright on the truth. Yeah. There comes a time you say, well, I missed it there. No, right. one, even, King David missed it. The apostle Peter missed it. Right. So it happens that we may miss. But, but, but as time goes by, the average of missing it is decreasing. Mm. And the average of succeeding in listening to his voice increases. Right. Amen. Develops over time. Yes. Amen. But like I said, it takes... Uh, determination. Paul says, never lack in zeal. Yes. Leviticus tells us, make sure that the fire always keeps burning. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we always keep that spiritual, uh, I don't like the word, but tension. Mm -hmm. There has to be a certain tension, uh, like an elastic. It has to be a little tension spiritually so that you don't do what you want to do, Galatians 5 says. There has to be a certain fear of the Lord in your life that prevents you from crossing the bridge and doing something that the Lord would not be pleased. There has to be a fear, a respect 
of the Lord. Amen. That's why it's dangerous, because his voice is so gentle, it's easy to brush him off. Mm. And that's where it's so easy to miss and, it. Uh, yeah, but yeah. that's why they, they made a mistake with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was such a kind Savior. Yes. They laughed at him on the cross. They yeah. mocked him. Yeah. Because he's a gentle person. They thought they could, you know, just step over him. Mm -hmm. But that's why the scripture says to fear the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. Right. Even though he's not an imposing, a tyrannical personality, mm -hmm. I have the wisdom to say, but I will respect him. Right on. Because he is God, he's the Holy Spirit, and I don't want to offend him. Amen. Don't want to miss that precious voice. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, Pastor Fan. That was absolutely lovely on the... The revelation to share with us on hearing the we voices. We had a wonderful time together. Absolutely. The Lord is so good. Well, I hope that you were abundantly blessed by today's program. We encourage you to join us for another exciting episode. Until then, I am Marcy Selman wishing you all a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Wow, what a detailed explanation by Pastor Chauvet. What a blessing it is to learn from God's word of the various pitfalls related to the many voices we hear. My prayer is that everyone has been inspired by today's episode to have a closer walk with Jesus. In fact, if you've enjoyed today's message, we invite you to take advantage of the wonderful books written by Pastor Chauvet by visiting our website at awordfortoday.ca or by calling the toll-free number indicated on the banner below. Actually, today's material was taken from the book, The Five Ways, so we invite you to get your own copy. Know that Pastor Chauvet's books are also available through Moriah Publications website as well as through Amazon and eBay. Now, I must ask you, why don't you consider becoming a partner with Pastor Chauvet? By doing so, the blessings of God will be poured out over your life in a wonderful way. In return for your faithful contribution, you will receive Pastor Chauvet's wonderful books as well as a donation receipt for your kind generosity. Trust me, you will not regret it the windows of heaven will be open in a supernatural way. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope and pray that you were abundantly blessed by this program. Please do join us again next time for another exciting episode of A Word for Today. Today.